Okay, so 10th lecture, we're going to talk about Cauchy's theorem and the Cauchy integral formula. And the Cauchy integral formula we presented is less general than the one provided on Conway's textbook. Okay, so where is it? Oh, uh, yep, so our statement is less general. So Cauchy's I mean, Conway's textbook, it says that as long as you're close brackets for curves such that the winding number is equal to 0 for all W and C, but not in G. Okay, so G is open set such that it is a closed curve in G. So if you have a winding number and 0 for all W not in G, then the winding number is 0. So if you're such curve, then we have this formula. But our statement is we didn't include this thing, okay? If you're closed curve, then for N, A, and G, then we have this, okay? So this is like a special condition, but uh, our is less general, but still, like we're still making progress, right? Okay? So today's goal is that we can uh, Prove the Cauchy's integral formula and Cauchy's theorem. So let's start with cauchy goussat's theorem. So what does cauchy goussat's theorem say? It's that it's like, okay, if for open set and the triangle inside the open set, and the interior triangle lies inside G, and F is analytic on G, then the integral of F on the slide of triangle, so the integral along this path, along any triangle, is equal to zero. Okay, so... This is the the thing, okay, the triangle. So we like gamma, like beyond the, the path is on the boundary. Boundary of the triangle, and we want to show that the integral on the boundary is equal to zero. But if we just take the midpoint of each side length and we adjoin them, it gives this triangle. And notice that these paths inside they canceled out, right? So one two three so this inside cancels out see so it is the same as going this so triangle is usual to the path of triangle one plus until the triangle four right along those paths so we have by come by triangle inequality we have this Right? Triangle inequality. Right? You just break them apart, we have this inequality. And for the total variation of the bound, right? It's essentially just the, the side width of the triangle. Right? Now let delta one, triangle one, be triangle J for some J equal one, two, three, four. So we pick one triangle among them such that its integral is the maximum. Okay, so this integral maximum so we then have this is less than equal to four times this right so I think that makes sense to you and then we divide it over to of this okay now so after we've done this we pick one element say we picked just say we pick triangle four and we do the same thing Right, we do the same thing and we do the same thing and we do the same thing, right? So we get a nested sequence of triangles with each of them is greater than to one or four of the previous one. I mean, of right, okay. I think there's some error here, it should be n plus one, right? So this is greater than one for the previous one, and this by like inductively. Is greater than one over four to the n times the original big one. Okay, so also know that yeah, it's just like the side length of the triangle and the side length, because by similar triangles, right? By grade ten math, right? If you pick the midpoints, they're like they're they're just similar triangles, right? So their side length is divided by two, right? So we divide two all the way up to one over two n. Now. That means that we also have the diameter of the triangle goes to zero, right? Because you get smaller and smaller. The diameter goes to zero as n goes to infinity. 
and the triangles, right? We include their slight length, and they are bounded, right? So they're closed and bounded, right? So they're compact. So we have a nested sequence of compact sets that the diameter goes to zero, which by Cantor's theorem, we have exactly one point lies in the intersection of all the triangles, of all such triangles, right? Where f is analytic at z naught, right? Because by uh, assumption. So we have a special point, and we know that f is analytic at this point, which means that there exists a function such that fz is equal to this, where nz goes to zero, as z goes to z naught. Okay, so for this expression, I have our point z naught, but, okay, so to make this more easy to see, if we, if we move this and we subtract this, we have fz minus fz naught, z minus z naught equals to f prime z naught plus nita z, right? So clearly, as z goes to z naught, this goes to fz. So this must be goes to zero, right? So this is like the thing we are talking about, nita, right? So since the function one is the function z minus z naught has a primitive, right? You can easily find the its antiderivative, which means that this derivative is equal to zero, and this derivative is, is also equal to uh, equal to this. I mean, yeah, this, if you just multiply a constant, it gives you zero. This one, you multiply by a constant f prime zero, it gives you back zero again. If you have a primitive, then you can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Notice that the fundamental theorem of calculus holds on open sets, G, not just open disks, right? As long as your domain is an open set, right? In this case, the interior of triangle, right? I mean, we are all live in G, right? So, anyways, we're in an open set, right? So we have a primitive, which means that we have fundamental theorem uh, calculus. So these term vanishes, which means that if we integrate these two term vanishes, the only left is these two terms. Okay? We have these two terms left. Okay. Now, as we have this close to zero, right? As we have this is equal to zero, right? Then for any epsilon, there's a delta such that for any z and z naught delta close, we have nita z, where it goes to zero, so we can make it arbitrarily small. So we could just make this point. We could just make this estimation. And we pick n large such that the nth triangle lives in the delta neighborhood of z naught. Okay? Because this is doable, right? Because Z naught lives in all the triangles. So for any neighborhood, you can have a triangle that intersects the neighborhood. Right, so this is possible. Now, which means that for any Z on on the for any Z on the length, on the side length, I mean the sides, we can have Z and Z naught are one over two of the side length. So one or two of the, this is the side length, the side length of the triangle. Their distance is less than one or two of the side length, right, which is one over two, n plus one to the side length of the big triangle. So notice at this point, we just have to, we just have a diagram. So if you have z naught is here, and this is your point z, right, if this is your point z, so I just make two cases when z is on the side length, and z naught sum are here, then this distance is shorter than this distance. And for z, you just connect to one of the vertex, or one of the vertices, right? So this is shorter than this, right? So we're done. And this this one is shorter than this one, right? Because if you just draw this and you, by Pythagorean theorem, right? This one is this one is longer, and we do Pythagorean theorem again. We see that this one is shorter than this side length, and by triangle inequality, right? This is less than one over two of the total, right? Of the total, I mean 
total because by triangle inequality again this is less than equal to this plus this okay? so it, you you must be less than one half of it right because if you're if you are one half then this plus this plus this is equal to one of the like the the thing right which means that which means that it violates a triangle inequality right so if okay special case if you're on the vertices you draw this line and if you just draw another perpendicular line you see that this one is shorter than one of the side length so it is well explained right so it is uh two and plus one less than this okay so now we're back to our estimation this is like a 4n of this right we know this already and we substitute 4n from we substitute this for this and for this we just use the estimation right this is 4n times okay so nz so in our like in our setting we have nz is less than this right so which is less than this nz and for z minus z naught right z minus z naught is less than 1 over 2 n plus 1 of this right and the length of this which is just 1 over 2 n of this so here we see that this is a squared these two cancels out and i think i think if i just put a 2 here just put a 2 here just put a 2 here then this goes to this goes away right so 2n plus 2n times 2n which is like 4n and cancels out with this so everything is cancelled out except for epsilon right so as epsilon is arbitrary we can have this if you go to zero so this proves the result so for rectangle, we have the integral along the rectangle is equal to zero because any rectangle like this you can go like this. So this is one triangle, and we go this again is another triangle. So it's zero, the sum up to zero. And these two cancels out. So the length along a rectangle is zero. So we have a new theorem with a Cauchy's theorem on a rectangle with finitely many points excluded. So if you have a rectangle lies in open set. Suppose you have finally many points in interior such that you are analytic on the domain except for these two, these points. And for each point, we have this condition. So Fz times Z minus uh, Z theta, yeah. as Z goes to theta i, is equal to zero. Then we have the rectangle along the rectangle is still zero. Okay? So it suffices to show when n, n equal to 1 works, right? Because if you have finally many points, bum, 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 each of them, you could divide them into rectangles, right? If you have three points, one, two, three, right? You could just subdivide them in case of rectangles. And you argue that, oh, this is zero, this is zero, and this is zero, and this is obviously zero, then we're done. So it suffices to show when n equal 1 works, right? So. So your rectangle, we just divide it into, so this is a big triangle. We subdivide into nine triangles. So one of them, including this. And notice that here, 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 boom, boom, boom. So these two cancels out and we go doom, 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 doom. Right, it cancels out. Right, it cancels out, cancels out, cancels out. So these all cancels out, right? So the only left is just the very outside ones. So along R is equal to integral along R1. And we can just make this R1 into a square with side length L. Now, which means that the integral, this integral, so one over zeta minus one over, one over z minus theta. So, any any points, 
and on the square. So this is the shortest uh, distance for any point. If you're here, right, you're clearly you're clearly longer than you're clearly longer than L over two. So so if we just do the reciprocal thing and we just flip the inequality, right? We just just flip the inequality. Then the length of R one, which is four L, right? One over L two times L. Well, L cancels L, it gives you eight. So we know that this is less than or equal to eight, a constant. So if we can if we estimate this, well this is just this, right? We just we just do this thing. Right? Because on R one on R one, our Z is never equal to and never equal to the point because we're on the uh square. Right? So we can divide it. And we just break this apart. We can bring this part outside first. We bring this is the upper bound and we And we estimate this thing, right? We can bring this away. Right. Okay, now for this, we have estimation, which is eight, right? We, we just did, this is less than equal to eight. So which is eight of supremum of Fz my, oh, uh, times Z minus theta i, but notice that we have this expression goes to zero as z goes to zeta i, right? So as l goes to zero, as the square gets smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller, we have this should be go to zero, right? This must be go to zero because, because this is our condition, right? This is our condition, which means that this goes to zero, then this goes to zero, right? So this, this is equal to zero, right? R1 is equal to 0. So we're done. Okay? Okay. So we have equipped it with two theorems, and we recall that, we have proven that if you're analytic in a disk, and suppose you're any closed rectifiable curve, then you have a primitive, and a closed curve in a row is equal to 0. So we already proved this before, but here, we give another proof of this. Alright? So this proof can lead to the Cauchy integral formula. Okay. And so without loss of generality, we just said the center is equal to zero and z for z and the ball, we define gamma z. So for zero, we define gamma z as the path from here, here. Right? And we define fz as the gamma z along this path. Right, but by Glossat's theorem, right, the triangle along triangle it, it vanishes. So this, this, this gives you zero, which means that this, this, minus this, or plus this, is equal to zero. Right, but anyways, by Glossat's theorem, right, this path is equal to this path, right, along in. Because triangle gives zero. Right? So we compute fz plus h minus fz. So here is z, there is plus h, z plus h minus fz. So these cancels out, right? So you're only left with these. And for these, we add a line, then we go forward and we go back. So here we have this, right? So this vanishes, and only the only left is this and this, but this is again equal to this. So f of z minus f of z plus h minus f z is gamma from z to z plus h, right? Now, as f is continuous at the point z, we have f w is equal to f z plus uh, phi w, where w goes to zero, okay? So, which means that this estimation is less than or equal to the supremum of of this function times the length of this, which is the length of this path, which is really just the the norm of h, right? Because the length. Sorry, it should be z plus h.
So that makes sense. The, this length is just norm of h, right? But this thing, we have this. So this goes to 0 as h goes to 0. So we just divide by h. Well, we just sub in, right? fz, fw, so fz plus 5w. And we just use the linearity. And notice that these parts drop to fz by direct computation. And this part, we keep it like this. And so we can move this over there. So we have this integral is less than or equal to the value of this. But this is less than or equal to the supremum of this, right? Because we have multiplied by h. But here we divide by h, so it cancels out. So the only thing left is this. And we know that this goes to zero as h goes to zero. So as desired, we have proven, um, proved the to have a primitive and a closed integral is also equal to zero by fundamental theorem calculus. So here we move on with Cauchy theorem on the circle with finally many point excluded. So as usual, open circle inside such that we have finally many points such that your analytic on those. And we have those conditions. Then we have first f as a primitive, and second for any closed curve and d prime, so it does not pass through these finite points. Then the integral should be zero. Okay. So notice that if we have if we have this, then i i follows immediately because even your closed curve in this domain, this domain is still an open set. So the fundamental theorem of calculus holds. Right, because fundamental theorem calculus holds on any open set. Okay, not only in disks. Right, any open set for F. so for an open set, if you just exclude finally many points, it is still in an open set. Right, you guys just think about it. Like for a disk, it is still an open set. All right, so again, it's sufficient to prove when n is equal to one. So when n is, there's only one problematic point. So if the point is here, you don't pass through point, then we're happy. But if you, if you define like this and this pass through this problematic point, we just go around it, right? And notice that no matter how you dodge, no matter how you do like this, right? We can always make it, we can always cancel it out. So. So if I have, so if I have this, and like extreme case, if I have something like this, right? So I go from here, here, right? This path and this path, this, this, and all the way up here, <coughs> and I reach this point. Now, if I subtract them, if I subtract this path. It should, it should give me zero, which means that these two paths have been the same integral value, right? If I subtract, I go back here. So, this goes away, right? Okay, so this goes away. Okay. Now, if I do go back here, now, if I join a line, if I'm at a line here, I go back here, right? I go forward and back. So this cancels out. But notice out for here, this we go here, and here we go here, and we go here, and we go here, and we go here. So this is a rectangle, so this cancels out, right? So we go back again. So it automatically, uh, essentially, they're all canceled out. Right? Okay. Okay, now we go now we I just we just add more we just add another line. We go here. We go here, we go here, we go forward and we go back. So this means that boom 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 boom. Right? This cancels out. Wait. Right, we have this right we have these two contribute this line this contribute this this and this so again we have canceled out 
right? So now the only thing we could, we just go back here, right? And we go back and we go back. So for here, right? This along green path, right? This we go up here, boom, boom, boom. So this cancels out, right? And again, obviously, obviously these two cancel, these two cancel. So everything is gone. So this is, this is just an example right, for, for some cases. But for anyways, we have the integral along a rectangle. So no matter how, how you choose it, if you go like this, then, well, if you go like this, we go here, 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 and we go back, boom, 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 boom. Then this rectangle goes to zero. And these two also go to zero, this goes to zero, and this path goes to zero. Right, so for any choice, by the rectangle theorem, the choice is independent on the path. So again, for this definition, we can still have f prime z is equal to fz and two follows. See? So if you have a problematic point, if you have a problematic point like like this, z and z plus h, right? z, z plus h, if you go here, I mean, sorry, if you go like here, if you go z, z plus h minus z, minus z. So, as an exercise, I I want to show, I want to show me that this is essentially equal to this. Right? As an exercise, it's easy to show, right? Even at this case, right? So the theorem follows. So here we finally on to the Cauchy integral formula. So if f is analytic on the circle, and for any gamma closed curve in a circle. For a in the circle but not in the curve, we have the winding number times f a is equal to 1 over 2 pi i of this. Okay, so this is the Cauchy's integral formula. So first, to prove it, we define fz as equal to this quotient. Notice that z is not equal to a, right? So f is analytic on d except for a. And we have this condition, special condition, we'll just multiply over there because fz minus fa, but this is equal to zero because f is analytic, so you're continuous, right? So by above theorem, this should give you zero. Right? Um, right? We just proved this, right? If you're on a circle, you're analytic on a circle except for finally remaining points, and if you have this, then for any closed curve, we have this, right? Now, if you are a closed curve in D prime, then you are a closed curve in D because D prime is a subset of D, right? So for any circle, closed curve in D, so closed curve in D prime, which is also closed curve in D, this gives is equal to this, but it gives you zero. So with this, we use the linearity, right? We use the linearity here, and notice that this is a constant. We could drop it, and this is, and this we just keep it and this is like some definition about winding numbers right so we just sub in it gives you this so it's a quick proof right so which is exactly what we want right uh this you don't want to keep an eye of this yeah so here's a special case if we define gz to be fz times z minus a if gz equals fz times z minus a, then we can sub into this. So g of a, what is g of a? g of a is equal to 0. And fz over z minus a, so z minus a cancels out, gives you fz. Right? And the 2 pi i is, vanishes because we have 0 here. So we have, this is true. So this is precisely the statement of Cauchy's theorem. Right?
Yeah, just a little special case. Well, we, we already approved it already, right? This is like a... Yeah. But anyways, right? So we have finished our proof. And we also finished our section. Thank you, guys.